to my podcast about sports, about sports, about sports. Damn, I'm good at singing. Woo. You sound delicious. Oh my goodness, I am so good at singing. Howdy, Ags. Welcome to the tailgate, home of Aggie football. What's up, C-Money? What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, Corey, today's episode is brought to you by Matthews Electric, full-service electrical contractors in the Brazos Valley. No job too big, no job too small. Call Blaine at 979-220-6403. Light up your home, light up your life. Uh... As always, I'd like to remind our listeners to uh, email us at axtailgate at gmail.com or uh, get on the YouTube and leave some comments. Uh, Subscribe, 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 as they say. Uh, Today's rundown brought to you by Frida Homes, Building Aggie Dreams, custom home builders with over 15 years of experience in the Brazos Valley. If you're looking for someone that cares about you and the details you care about, contact Frida Homes. Give Justin a call at 979-450-4466. When you call, just remember, everyone loves everyone. their free to home. homes. You know, that's right. Uh, Corey, uh, a comment from the tailgate today, uh, Living with Jay. He commented uh, on as we were talking yes, uh, last week about uh, the folks and the depth at the defensive line. He said, don't sleep on Solomon Williams, the defensive end, freshman freshman incoming defensive end Solomon Williams. So, uh, yeah, agree with Jay. Guy's got a lot of potential, and uh, you know, but he's young. He's young. So uh, Yeah, exactly. It's hard for freshmen, especially defensive ends, to make an impact. Yeah. I I, I, I think uh, – look, I, I think the guy's got a chance to be a, a pretty darn good player while here at A&M. I just don't – I'm not sure that it's going to happen in 2024. Right. Uh, today's topic, spring position battles, Corey. We're going to talk some spring position battles. But before we get there, let's uh, do a little around Aggie land here. Uh, yes. And uh, talk some – let's start with some Aggie basketball. Got it. You remember last podcast, man? We were yeah coming off of this amazing freaking win over Tennessee. We were so excited yes. about this t- team starting to come together. I think Love it. five of the last six. Right. Unstoppable. Man, unstoppable. Made turn. I mean, made the turn. Whew. Do no wrong. Got to go to Vanderbilt, beat the hell out of Vandy. But. And then set up an amazing matchup with Alabama over the weekend, dude. Amazing. I mean, we were riding high, bro. Oh, man. Apparently, we may have been high because yeah. <laughs> this team then turned around and lost to Vandy and then didn't even show up against Alabama. They're 15 and 10 overall, 6 and 6 in the conference. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say, dude. I mean, Vanderbilt, I don't know if you know this, Corey. Vanderbilt is two and ten in conference now. One of those wins over the Aggies, the other one over Mizzou, who has no wins in conference. That's it. That is it. Dude, we we just have an ugly basketball team. I mean, if we if there's a pretty game, we're not in it. And we're getting blown out if somebody's playing pretty basketball. Because we just do not play. We have to make it ugly. It has to be an ugly game. There's got to be a lot of fouls called. It's got to be a ton of turnovers and not by us. Because we can't shoot for shit. It's annoying to watch our team shoot the basketball. What's worst is that against Vandy, they actually shot well. Like 44% from the three-point line. They didn't miss a single free throw. They still got beat. They still got beat. This team is that bad. They got out rebounded that game. I am I'm done. I am done talking about this basketball team as far as them being good. I'm done talking about Buzz Williams having done a good job with this basketball team. Look, this season was supposed to be the year in which they came out, competed for an SEC championship, and made a run in the tournament. They brought basically everybody back from last year aside from two guys. 
their two mm-hmm. leading scorers and big time producers, maybe their three leading scorers from last year's team are are, are back in Coleman, yep. Radford, and Taylor. Yep. Um, you know, they they brought they they sat in there and everybody was expecting Wade Taylor to be an all SEC performer. None of these things have happened, by the way. None of these things have happened. They're 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 bad defensively. They're bad defensively. And we're gonna talk about the Alabama game here in a second. But you know, on top of that, <laughs> they're a horrible offensive team, just like you said, right? So it's not like Awful. like it's not like last year where they struggled at times offensively, but defensively they played so hard that they kept them in games all the time. Look, that's not the case for this team anymore. Um, you know, they play against Vandy and they don't come out with any, they come out with no energy whatsoever. They get, you know, this is a team that just lives by the offensive rebound. Vandy out offensive rebound, 12 to 8. Uh 12 turnovers to five by Vandy. You want to look, you want to look at how you lose a game in which you shoot 44% from three and you know, almost 50% or whatever from the from from if as field goals in general, 100% from the free throw line. That's how you that's how you do it. You turn the ball over. You play lazy basketball and turn the ball over a bunch and you don't play much defense. There you go. No, I, believe, I agree with you. And I've seen too much Hefner on the floor the last couple of games. That kid, I know he got in there and washed up duty in Alabama, but he played in that Vandy game. I don't know why he was in the floor. He has been awful since game five or six of this year. I mean, he started out looking like he'd made improvements, but yeah, I don't know what's going on with that kid, but he, it's just his head's not right. He's too good a player to be playing like he is. It's embarrassing. I mean, he's wide open shots. He's timid to take them, and he does take them. They're bricks. I mean, I'm just talking about him. I mean, it's all the players. I mean, Wade, Boots, Boots. Boots is basically a one-trick pony. If you can stop him from going to his left, you pretty much stopped him. If you if you make him settle for a jump shot, I'd give it to him all day. Yeah. Anderson Garcia and Washington, great hustle, great rebounders, offensive liability. Bowman, same thing. Gets the ball. If he's just he's so strong, but what's he can't worse about the it ball. is what's worse about it is they haven't none of those guys, this team hasn't gotten any better, right? It hasn't gotten better. Yeah. None of those players have advanced from where they were a year ago. As a yeah. matter of fact, Wade Taylor's taking a step back, right? Coleman's taking a step back. Hefner's taking a yeah. step back. You, you know, maybe steps. Anderson, maybe Anderson Garcia is a guy that's 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 took a step forward. And and because I, I got to give it to him, the, I, I love the way that kid plays, and and I take him on my team all day, every day. But you go look at everybody else, and it seems like they've taken a step back. And how's that possible, right? I mean, a year. Oh, I know. Further in we got Levesque. He hasn't shown me a thing. Carter has, I think, a lot of potential, but still just many of Many of hasn't developed at all, at all. He's like a poor man's boots, is what he is, because he goes left the whole time, just like boots. And Look, these teams are starting to they're, they're watching great tape. athleticism. He's got great, but he's developed none at all whatsoever. Yeah, and, I mean, these all these coaches have tape, and they're watching what these guys are doing, and we're doing the same thing. It's like Jimbo Fisher's coaching the team because we're doing the same damn thing solo, every day. Solo, same thing for a different out. Yeah, solo, solo chucking thing. up threes the other night. I was like, what the. Jeez. So, you know, look, a loss to Vandy is inexplicable, in freaking explicable, right? Mm-hmm. There is no accepting that. You shouldn't make the tournament if you lose to Vandy. That's just fact, period. Which one, the SEC tournament or the NCAA? <laughs> Either. They should disqualify you from the SEC tournament for losing to Vandy. Yep, they're out. Um, and here's the thing. Then you hear Buzz on the freaking radio talking about the fact that he wants people to stop bothering him during breakfast. And what? Oh yeah, yeah. Don't bother me during breakfast. I'm trying to eat breakfast. Whatever. Look, Buzz. You know I could. Ooh, I almost said it too. You can kiss my big old rump because here's the thing. You know the reason you get paid is so that you can coach this basketball team. And so, and the reason you get paid so much is that you can put up with fans and understand that fans are the lifeblood of your team. The reason this team has a chance 
It's because of the fans that sit in the stands, that come up to you, that want to talk to you. So, you know what? Put your crybaby BS, your crybaby BS, and maybe start coaching a little bit instead of worrying about who the hell's talking to you during breakfast and asking the guys over there at uh, at Snooze, by the way, if you want to catch a buzz for breakfast, find him at Snooze where he goes all the time. Instead of sitting over there at Snooze and asking for a back room or whatever to, to avoid people, how about do your job? Do your job and quit crying about people bothering you during breakfast. Maybe you won't get your butt kicked by Alabama 100 to 75, okay? 100 to 75? Damn. 100 to 75. That was the score, right? Yeah, it was like the NBA All-Star game. No defense. No defense. I mean, they just let Bama do whatever the heck they wanted to. It's Wide open three, take it. Take them all. Everything was hit. Alabama was should have one of their guys come here and show our guys how to shoot. And they went back to their normal self as far as shooting, you know, 17% from the three-point line. You know, I didn't know there'd be that much. <laughs> really, I didn't think we made that many. And they couldn't keep it. They, I mean, this was a blowout from the get-go. That's in spite of the fact that they had 26 offensive rebounds. I mean, in spite of that, they still couldn't get the ball in the basket. It, it was, it was a ridiculously poor performance. They didn't even come to sh- show up to compete against a team like Bama. And is Bama the best team in the SEC? They're one of the better teams in the SEC. They're up there. They're, they're number one in the standings right now. But yeah, but you. You come to play them last year the way that they they that the way that we played them because of our defense and because of the 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 energy that we play with that we used to play with. Yeah, we're not playing with that this year. You show up, you show up, yeah, you show up Saturday and you don't have any of that. You don't have any of that. Well, okay. Well, what are you thinking? Next year's gonna be better. I'm thinking no. You lose your two best players, right? At I At think least. you're losing a lot more than that. And probably a lot more than that. Look, Buzz needs to go. Fire Buzz. He needs to go. New AD's got one job. Find us a basketball coach right now. Yep. That's his go one to job. Duke and take their coach. Take the Duke basketball coach, the Duke <laughs> football coach. We'll be fine. We're good. If look, I, yeah, if you can get the Duke basketball coach, man, all power to you. You need a raise. Go get him. I will give you a raise. We got their football. We got their football coach. How hard can it be to get a basketball coach? I know, I know, I know. We're pretty close there. Come on, uh, <laughs> Coach K retired. Get him. Hey, hey, Coach K may be interested. You know, hey, coming back. What do you think? I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm with everything you just said. I'm tired. I mean, Buzz, the future doesn't look bright. It did this year, but I'm looking at the the roster. I don't see. If Wade's gone next year, Boots is gone next year. Coleman. Uh, hey? Coleman. Gone? It doesn't matter if he's gone. Who's going to get him the ball? We don't have any guards. Obaseki's going to be back. I mean, what do you, I mean, what are we thinking here? Who's going to score? I mean, Garcia can't score. Solo can't score. Um, I mean, you know the you, crazy part the about it, too? You know the crazy part about it, too, is that when they talked about all these transfers coming in, Carter, you know, and some of these other guys, and some of the freshmen that came in, you know, they talked about, oh man, these guys can, these guys can put the ball in the hoop, right? They're good shooters. They scored where they were before. It's like, and then all of a sudden, like, what is Buzz doing with this basketball team that actually makes them worse shooters? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, I honestly don't think Buzz is a bad coach. I don't think he's a, the, a really good. I don't know if the word evaluator of talent. No, I mean, he works well with what he has. At this point. I disagree with you right now. Let I don't think he about. brings in a lot of talent. He didn't bring in the talent. We used to bring in a lot of talented guys. Maybe he's just not a good recruiter. I don't know what the word is. Well, he's we're not getting the talent we used point. to You're get. Right. He's none of those things at this point, but I don't think he's a good coach either. I think he's become a person that if you listen to him talk, he's all, he starts just babbling about these Oh, well, these statistics and this, this and that. And, you know, people that do this tend to blah, blah, blah. You know, and he's gotten so far up his own butt that he's he stopped actually coaching basketball, right? He's sitting there, you know, trying to hit certain criteria or whatever. Listen, forget it, man. The game of basketball is about two things. One, ball in hoop. All right? That's it. Can't do that. Ball in hoop. Can't do that. Number two. 
stop the, worst the other team from getting ball and hoop. We don't do that either. But you look at him and how this team plays defense now, it's all switches, and they let people get straight to the basket. I mean, they don't even slow them down on their way to the basket, right? I mean, Wade Taylor mm -hmm. will open up so that you've got a clean path to the basket on 90% of drives. I mean, he, he doesn't. does that, but he's always in foul trouble. How is he always in foul defense? He reaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I'm telling you, he is not a good basketball coach right now. That team's offense, that team's offense, that doesn't move the ball. The ball doesn't ever move. It sits in Wade Taylor's hands or Radford's hands, and they dribble, 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 and then drive. That's it. That's their offense. There's no movement. The players around them don't move. The ball doesn't move. That's not offense. It's not good offense by any means, you know? I don't need somebody to text us or email us and tell me what Buzz Williams' contract is because I need to know what his buyout is. He can't be as bad as Jimbo's. No, but no, but he's he's he he is also overpaid for sure. Hey, look, they've got six games remaining. I don't think, tonight. I don't, I don't think included tonight's right. They're favored by twelve tonight. I didn't touch it, but they're favored by twelve. Yeah, I I would have put my entire bank account on Arkansas. Um, Arkansas look, already beat us once. I know. Look, they got their, like five wins. Out of the out of the six games remaining, I mean, it's not unex like it wouldn't be inexplicable that they lose four of them, right? And I don't know, and and that would be winning Arkansas. That'd be winning Arkansas, right? But they still play Tennessee. They still play South Carolina, who's extremely good basketball team, and they play both Which of them. Struggling right now. Ole Miss, is, we, Ole Miss has already beat us, right? Right. Um, they don't deserve to go to the tournament, and if they get in. And by the way, I looked at the bracketology today, and they had them down to an 11 seed, down from a nine, down to an 11 seed. If they get in, they just happen to get in, they're going to be one and done again. This is a team that won't stick around at the tournament very long. Buzz needs to go. So you think it'd be better if they went to the NIT to get some more basketball in? <laughs> They'd lose the NIT, so don't worry about it. But, you know, we're not even talking about next year. I mean, you're bringing Oklahoma and Texas in. They got two good basketball schools. They've both been in and out of the top 25 all year this year. So, I mean, it's getting better. We're going to have more competition next year. It's not going to yeah. get weaker. No. But our team looks like they're going to be weaker. Yeah. So, I, mean, I, I don't see where they'll, find, where they'll find 40 points on this team right now. So No. Um, hopefully all the, all the big wigs in Aggie land that are listening – Start the start the process. Let's start moving on from Buzz. Go get, go talk to our our AD and uh, let's get go get this thing done. Right? Let's go get yeah, find a coach that knows how to shoot the ball. Knows how to put the ball in the bucket. Man, it's frustrating as hell to watch that team shoot the ball. Yeah, this this team doesn't actually do anything well at all, other than offensive rebounding. Yeah, offensive rebounds. Hey, That's just because uh, they have to because they miss so many notice, damn shots. Did you happen to notice sort of a theme on my part today? what you're drinking your glasses you're wearing aggie baseball stuff baseball yes baseball there you go because at least we can sit in here and have hope over baseball now you know we just go oh, yeah we beat the hell out of mcneese whoa at least whoa. one day's of, one weekend of hope man one weekend whoa. of hope. let's talk a little aggie baseball because they did sweep McNeese in the opening weekend, and they get Incarnate Word today, which should be another win. But I'm going to tell you a reason for hope. One run allowed in three games. Against yes, McNeese. I know. I know. But this is a pitching staff that struggled mightily last year to say, like, that's an understatement, right? Like, they couldn't throw strikes. They yeah, they were walking like 10 batters a game or something stupid. It was something ridiculous. And I'll take I'll take I'll take the sweep of McNeese allowing one run in three games, and I'll say that that gives me some hope. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I like that. I like the bats. I mean, we got that lineup's pretty potent, it looks like as of right now. Montgomery's yeah. first at bat, 
gone. See you later. He's going to fit Jace. into that lineup real nice. Yeah. They were worried about Jace having a slow start. Don't worry. What do you do this Three week? Dingers. Three dingers. Oh, there you go. There you go. Just saying. I mean, uh, Slosh was saying his biggest concern is he wants guys to get on base. He wants more contact. Wants, uh, wants runners. Well, three guys that did that for them this weekend, shortstop mm -hmm. Pat Murillo, uh, first baseman Bender up, and the all-everything freshman, third baseman Grahovic. All three of those guys, those were your three leading hitters, by the way, this, this weekend, average-wise. Nice. They all hit over 400 this weekend. Because if they get on base, they're going to have to pitch to Jace and Montgomery. I mean, they're going to have to pitch to them if those guys get on base. Yeah, I think the lineup's going to be pretty darn excellent. This is what I'm excited about. Three starters this weekend. Prager, mm -hmm. Lampkin, and Dow. How do you say that? I don't know. Dow? Dow? I don't know. All right. Did Cortez pitch this weekend? No, I don't think so. Those three guys started the three the three games, Okay. And Lampkin yeah. only went three and two thirds. The other two guys went five innings apiece. They all, none of them allowed a single run. But think about this about these guys. Lampkin and Dow were freshmen last year. And Dow looked pretty good towards the end of the year uh, into the playoffs, right? Yeah. Those two guys are freshmen this year. Exciting to see their second year. I think these guys have an opportunity to get a ton better. And then Prager, who's probably going to be our number one, was out all last year because of an injury. You know what I mean? All right. So to have these guys as your one, two, three, heck, you, you're not even using Montgomery as a pitcher. He was a pretty good pitcher over there at Stanford, right? Yeah. Um, dude, I'm excited about that. I want to see how these guys continue to develop throughout the season as those weekend starters. I want to see how these sophomores – go in and continue to get better and better and and hopefully even extend it from five innings to six, maybe seven innings from time to time, from three and two thirds out to fives to six innings, right? That's not baseball anymore. <laughs> that isn't baseball anymore. anymore. But, but that's no, what it's I, I was talking about Cortez earlier. I watched that kid pitch last year. He's got a freaking cannon. Doesn't know where the hell it's going half the time last year, but damn, he has a cannon. That guy, I mean, it's 100 plus miles an hour. Which is uh, I guess Bach, by the way, Ashenbach, who who everybody considers our best pitcher, was the one guy who gave up a run. Jackass. Uh, I feel pretty good about where he's going to be. Look, I, just a pit. Yes, it's McNeese, and we won't we won't see them play anybody that's very good until they come up to DFW for that tournament. Um, but but to see them actually pitch and throw strikes. Man, it it really already gets me going. It really does. I'm hey, you know, you said we're playing Incarnate Ward. I don't know if you saw the video on ESPN of Incarnate Ward versus Texas A and M Corpus Christi or Commerce or something. At the end of the game, they had a huge brawl. Like I'm talking, it lasted like a while. Basketball. These guys, basketball. yes, basketball oh, yeah. game was over. They're high fiving each other, and you see some little guy running the court. There's nobody really in the stands i mean it's a dead gym they just blood fist i mean it's crazy man like what the hell am i watching was it a fan i don't know who it was. i think it was one of the managers from the incarnate ward basketball team ran back on the courts while some of his players were still out there and hit somebody and then they just all both teams just go at it i'm talking like the just nuts you gotta watch it they should suspend the rest of the season for both of them idiots I, I think that was more exciting than the game itself. So, I mean, I, I encourage that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sam. Uh, hey, let, the team right. sucks. We're going to feature it. Take over to football here. And uh, all right. <clears throat> even though, you know, I'm going to be cheering a lot of baseball over the next couple months, that's, that's going to be it. I'm done. I'm <laughs> done with basketball, by the way. Done. Oh, come on. Hey, come uh, on. On a football note, uh, former AM running back, Trey Williams, yeah. signs a contract with the UFL, and he's going to 
you know, he's been with, I think he's been with Cincinnati, right, for the last couple of years, the Bengals and stuff. And he got a little bit of run here last year. I mean, he got some carries and some couple of touches here and there. But uh, he's gonna he's gonna try to he's gonna try to show off his skills at the UFL. Get him, Trey. Hey, Aggies winning thirteen to eleven. Twelve minutes left to go in the first half. And I'm wondering whether it's that Trey Williams or because remember there's two Trey Williams. This could be the other Trey Williams. Travion may still be with the Bengals and not in UFL. This may be Trey Williams, which was prior to Trey Travion, uh, which has sort of been in and out of the league for a long time. Probably that. Yeah, probably. All right, so let's talk a little bit about position battles, man. Position battles. And let's 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 begin on offense, right? And you know, I tell me if I if I if I'm wrong here. Tell me if you disagree with me. But I think I we're pretty much set at quarterback, right? We know who's going to be the quarterback, right? Yeah, I don't know who the number two is, but I know who number one is. Maybe there's a battle. If for you're talking two. position battles, I'd say who's the number two. Yeah, maybe a battle. Yeah, there could be. There very well could be a battle. And one of those two guys may transfer after spring, right? I mean, whoever loses that battle could transfer. If they've stuck with our history at A&M in the last five years or whatever since Jimbo's been around, our starting quarterback's gotten hurt every freaking year. Yeah. I'm talking the backups played a good chunk. And even the third string has played a good chunk. So there's a good chance. let's, Let's hope. Let's hope. That I'm just saying, make it through the season history. without it without six injuries. At the if you look, I mean, if you look at college football as a whole, not too many teams the starting quarterback plays every game. It's just you get just dinged team, up. Just just the teams that that win a lot. I mean, how many quarterbacks can you say started every game last year? I believe Georgia Florida State quarterback got knocked out at the end of the year. Michael Penix. Uh, who? Michael Penix. JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy didn't he was out like a first game or two. Uh I don't think so. You might want to check that. I think you're wrong. I could have been. All right. So, I mean, so but yeah, you're right. I mean, help Alabama look. was out for a game because his dumbass coach set him on the bench to play South Florida. Not because of injury. Yeah, but I'm just saying. You don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, Ewers missed a couple of games, right, with some injuries. But the, it, you know. Getting back to it, I you know, hopefully you're right. I mean, the, the backup quarterback is super important on this team, always has been. Um, but in today's college football, in today's yeah. college football, the third string quarterback is probably going to leave, right? And the third string is going to end up being that freshman O'Neal that's here now, right? That's what I see happening. Either yeah, I can see that. Reed or Henderson is going to end up third and – uh the other one may may transfer out. I hope and, not. Um, I hope not. But that's is not Connor be... eligible for the draft after this year. Huh? Is Connor eligible for the draft after this year? Or does he have to wait one more year? No, he's eligible after this coming year. Yeah. Okay. But we think Connor's the starter here. I think it's his position. As long as he's healthy, he's taking that. He's taking that on. So let's so okay. let's move on from quarterback. I I do think you know there there is a battle for second string, but let's let's move on from quarterback a little bit. All right. To me. If you ask me what the biggest position battles on the offense are, yeah, I think they're on the offensive line. I think they're on the offensive line, and I'm going to tell you one position specifically that I would put right at the top, and that is right. Bryce Foster in the center position. And especially in this situation where Bryce is going to go do track again, he's going to throw, and he's not going to be a part of a part of spring. Well, you know what? It's time for a coaching staff to step up and say, okay, we understand that you want to run track. We understand right. that you're very good at it. However, for this team to be at its best, we need a guy that's here in the spring for this offensive line to be the leader of an offensive line. That doesn't happen overnight. That takes time and reps and more and more reps and hopefully this coaching staff unlike the prior one will actually put somebody else in to play center and give that position to the guy that earns it earns it in the spring now no, I, I hear you probably the guy i hear you buddy but let me get something straight first when you say 
Foster runs track. You got to be careful how you say runs track. He doesn't run <laughs> no. track. No, no, no. He doesn't. <laughs> He's not like Devon A chain out there running track. Correct. He's at a position that's probably the most important position on the offensive line. Yeah. Center. Yeah. He's basically our head coach on the field besides your quarterback. I mean, he's holding those guys in check, but he hasn't been doing that. Yep. If he's not getting the snaps, I think they need to take a strong look at Naboo or whoever, or maybe even Basantis. I'm not sure who the answer is at center. But somebody that's going to be there taking the snaps in the spring game and the first few games of the season. And then if Foster beats him out by the fourth or fifth game of the year, or third or fourth game, so be it. But what I, I would, think you need to have some chemistry there want, to start the season. I want what I I I I completely agree with you in the way in in the Nabu and the you know whether and that they have to find a second guy in that group, right? Like you said, right. maybe Vasantis, maybe it's one of the transfers in in Reed Adams or, or 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 one of those guys. You know, they have to find a second guy in that group to be the backup center, and then right. take Foster and let him go compete at guard. Go compete at guard. Because to be right. the leader of that offensive line, to be the center point of that offensive line, you have to be there all the time. Yeah, you got to be putting the work in with the rest of the guys. They got to see you putting that work in. Even though you're doing track and you're working with that, it's it's not the same thing. He, can, he can't be part-time football and be the starting center for this football team. I don't think he can do both of them well. And if it's me, if it's me, and hopefully this coaching staff is smarter than the last one. They find a couple of guys that can play center. Look, Nabu, like you said, he 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 played last year in the spring and played well, right? He played well. I at guess center, well enough. You know, may, as good as Foster played during the season, right? Yeah. Um, and and so they do have to find another guy that's going to be able to take reps there at center, aside from Foster. When he comes back in the fall, throw him into the mix at guard, and boy, there's a lot of it. Yeah, but, that's what I was thinking. I was like, my starting five right now, off the top of my head, I got Zune at left tackle, Dewberry at left guard. Either they're probably going to put Foster at center, but I'd put Naboo, who's going to be there. And then at right guard, I'm going to put Father at right tackle and probably Basantis at right guard as of right now. That's just with my experience of the roster. Yeah. Now, if some of those other guys are better than what I think they are, I have no idea. Yeah. So that's what I would go with. I, I go fully with. agree with you. Those those are those would be my starting five today. Um, those would be my yeah. starting five today. And you know, you got to talk about okay, how's the competition between father and crown over at right tackle? Okay. Right. <laughs> I think Zoom's the guy that probably has the most solid spot. I would think Dewberry's right there at guard because he's been our best guard maybe the last two years at when he's yeah. on the field. You know, for some reason they keep taking him in and out. But you know, to me, those two guys, those two guys, I would set them on the left side and I would let them get comfortable playing next to each other and working together, and I'd leave them there. Those guys get every rep together on the left side, on the starting side. And then you figure out, is Besantis coming in to guard, right? And if he is, you move him in there, then who's the competition on the outside? Is it Father and Crownover? Can some of the young guys, Thomason, Herb, Shanahan, to some of the transfers and Reed Adams, can they get into the mix? I think they have to go do something to get in the mix, right? But it's a new coaching staff. It's a new, off it's a new offensive line coach. So really and truly, they're all going to start. They're all starting new, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> yeah. As far as this tell you, I think concerned, they've all done the same thing. I think that moving a younger man into an interior position is easier than putting him on a tackle, and we've shown that we have not had good luck with that over the years. Putting Asantis out of tackle last year, Zoom when he was a freshman, he did fine. But you can still – this freshman, I mean, that's a big – Yeah, I think you start him at inside, a guard. I mean, I thought Father, he played pretty well as a freshman at, out of tackle. But but you're right. I mean, look, and Besantis, <laughs> Besantis, some of the issues he had last year were because of sort of being out in space at times. 
But the other issue he had was he was a freshman and he got overpowered a lot, right? That's what I'm saying. He got overpowered a lot. Hopefully this right. offseason with new strength and conditioning coach, hopefully those guys up front are getting stronger, bigger, better, right? Um, I got to say, I got to give the offensive line guys, they all, a lot of them, almost damn near all of them came back. I got to tip my hat to those guys, man. I mean, they they took a lot of punishment from not just us, a lot of fans about sure. how bad they were. And these guys suck. Yeah, I'm sure they heard it. Hey, man, they all came back and they said, hey, we don't care what they're saying. We're going to line up and do the best we can. I got to give them props for that. And I know a lot of guys would have just said, yeah, I don't agree. listen to that. Agreed, one hundred percent, man. And the beauty of it is, they've got a new coach, and they've got a, It's a new beginning for those guys. And so, right. hey, man, get after it this spring. I want to see all of them compete in this spring. I think that's where the biggest offensive competition is gonna is gonna sit is that offensive line. But I'll give any you of those. Uh, any transfers or freshmen have a chance of playing this year? Offensive line that you think of? I can't think of any off of my head. I mean, the Reed Adams kid out from Kansas could could probably get. I mean, may get in the mix at guard. I just, you know, I have. Did a he started Kansas, huh? Did he started Kansas? Yeah, and and I have a hard time, but I have a hard time thinking. I mean, I really believe that it's probably Basantis and Dewberry at guard, and so he. I think he's going to have to be pretty good to get a, a spot in there, right? I mean, don't you think? I mean, but I'll tell you what, the Kansas team was. A better offensive line than we had. I mean, they had yeah. a mobile quarterbacks. They yeah. were running around like crazy. But uh, yeah, I can sure, agreed, agreed. Maybe center. He, Maybe I think he's, play center. I don't know. He's probably the guy. Yeah, and if yeah, if one of the transfers can play center, I definitely think they can get on the field. Right? They yeah. can snap. I think they can get on the field. So another position I think is interesting, and I think is a big battle, is running back. Right? We. We don't really know what the status is with Moss. I, it, you know, I think sort of that initial scare or whatever for that people sort of got because of, you know, his social media or whatever. I don't know. I think he's here. I think he's here. And if you ask me, uh, if you ask me, the competition for starting running back is between him and Owens. Um, uh, I think I'm afraid we're going to see the same thing we saw last year, and that's a running back by committee. And that's where the, all three of the guys, I would say they went with the hot hand, but they didn't do that. They just kind of <laughs> subbed them in and subbed them out. Oh, yeah, the randomly threw them out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Moss didn't play in this week, so Daniels and Owens, will, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of – I like Daniels. Also, I like Daniels a lot. Uh, I like Daniels a lot. I I think – He's got a role on this team, and, and and I do think he could easily be the third down back. But the funny part is that Owens could be the starting running back here. He could be the third round back. He could be a guy that plays out in the slot sub. I mean, that guy's got every every tool in the book. I think Moss is probably your your best bet as far as a downhill runner. Yeah, I think he's your power. Your power back, right? Yeah. Um, Even though they put Daniels in the backfield last year on short yardage. I, I a lot of times, one of the yeah. Huh? Well, I, I think it's because of the fact that he's probably got better vision, right? But, yeah. I don't know. I think Moss is going to be the one that – I mean, it's a sophomore year. I think it's a big year for running backs from the freshman to sophomore year. I think he's going to have a big season. You mean Owens? I think he's going to – Moss huh? is going to be a junior. I'm sorry. I'm talking about Owens. I think Owens is going to take that step up this year and be – Dominant. I think if they can find ways to get the ball in that kid's hand in space, because he has good hands. Receiving, I saw him catch some passes last year. I think he's a threat out of the backfield. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. I agree. I think ultimately Daniels takes the majority of the snaps. Not Daniels. Owens takes the majority of the snaps. I do think Owens takes the majority of the snaps. I think that Last year, physically, he wasn't quite ready. He didn't get a great off-season workout. He came in. He was slight. He wasn't very strong. I think of off-season in the weight in a college weight room and all those things that that come with it. I think this coming year is night and day compared to last year for Owens. I'll tell you what: the coaching staff is going to change it up. It's going to be 
he's going to see more holes just because of spacing, the way the coaches are going to line players up. It's going to be amazing to see what a motion offense is going to do to the running game. And they're going to see things. It's going to see – he's going to be able to see holes that you haven't seen before because they weren't there. You know, because the offense is too, uh, different. I, Look, I'm looking forward to some different personnel packages, right? Two running backs on the field at the same time. Yeah. You know, on multiple occasions, right? And and lots of substitution amongst the wide receivers and all those things. You know, if you want to talk about another group, I mean, who's the third, fourth wide receiver? We could get into that discussion, right? What's the role for some of these transfers, you know, at, at wide receiver? Maybe a Barber, an Allen. What happens with T's? You know, it's all those types of things. I think, you know, we've got – I think Moose is our number one. That's my opinion. I think he is the best guy out there. And then there's sort of everybody else, which are kind of in the same mix with Thomas, with Walker, with, you know, the, you know, I don't know, that incoming incoming transfer, Allen, Tease, you know, who's now going to be a sophomore. And those guys, how about Bussy as a freshman? Does he get into the mix as an athlete, running back, wide receiver, slot guy? I don't know. I'm curious to see where they're going to put that kid. I, I hope they play him both ways. If he's talented but, enough, I'm all for it. Yeah, especially because we're going to talk defense here a little bit. But you know, the, the, all of a sudden there's a lot of depth at cornerback, right? So yeah. So I think you know, yeah, get him involved, man. Get him involved. But I'm hopeful. I am hopeful that Colin Klein does a much better job than than Jimbo ever did with regards to the rotation at wide receiver because I want to see all of these guys on the field. Let's run routes, man. Let's go full out. Let's get them in and out of the ball game. Go three in, three out, whatever, man. All these guys can play. You know what I mean? Let's let them go play. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah. And so I don't know that it's a competition to see who's on the field. I, hopefully it's a competition between six of them to all get on the field, right? Well, yeah. If you have that much talent, that's a, that's, not, that's a good problem to have if you yeah. have a lot of talent. I'm just worried. I mean, look, we have a lot of guys that aren't really proven. I mean, Thomas had a couple good games last year. Walker had a couple good games last year. Moose has had a couple good games over his career, but nothing you can say is consistent between any of our wide receivers. Like who, not like an Anias or a Stewart that were good for right. so many catches a game. Well, Those guys I'll only disappeared this. because the coaching sucked. I'll say this with Moose. I think that every time he's had an opportunity, he's produced. Right? How many times is that? Three, four? It's only been it's only been four or five maybe at the at the moment. I'm gonna say it's not many. You know, the only position we really didn't talk about is tight end. I'm a firm believer that Green's gonna get the 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 nod here. I don't think there's I think so too. I don't think there's gonna be competition. But there is that second tight end position, that max right sort of position. Yeah. That one's going to come into play, right? I mean, I think there's a lot of bodies there that can do that. And Platt, you know, showed some things as an athlete last year, as a freshman at tight end. You know, and then the transfers, you know, with Watson from Washington, Miller from Purdue. I mean, both of those guys are kind of similar. And then, you know, everybody's always talked about Theo, the Swede, about his physical <laughs> abilities, right? His physical abilities. Can third year on campus – be the year for that guy to start actually becoming a football player. I have no idea. There's so many question marks with that tight end. It's green going to be back and fully healthy. It's flat ready to take that next step. I mean, he didn't show a whole lot last year, just a little bit. Uh, the other two, I, I haven't seen him play. I didn't see him at Washington or, or at uh wherever the hell else he was at Purdue. Purdue. And I didn't see either, either one of them play. You know, that's a great point with Green, though. You, you, is he going to be fully back from that injury? Um, you know, and if he's not, then maybe it is a situation where Platt and one of these other guys can get on the field at the same time early in the season, and then, you know, Green sort of comes back as, as he gets there, right? Um, you know, it kills me watching the tight ends because you and I go to the spring practice, spring games, and whatever else, watching practice. We're always in awe because these guys are so big and so talented. I mean, they're six five, six six, running fast, showing hands. But when they get on the field, I don't see it. I do not see it. I mean, we watched. I think it was Jake Johnson and Green and whoever else a couple of years ago. I, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jake, I, I always thought Jake was 
a little, you know, a little less, you know, a little more of a plotter, you know, more of a, you know, he's bigger. He's kind of a more. Yeah, but I'm saying these guys are big. They, they have the ball up. They should be able to out jump people like they did to our defensive backs last year. They should be able to do that, but our defensive backs aren't giving them that chance. You got to get the ball up. You got six, five, six, six guys. Put the ball put up. up. Let them go get it. Put it up high. Yeah. I remember, I remember Tom Brady throwing it to Gronk, you know, on the corner it's route. Up here. Yeah. It's up. Wait, you know. Look at Kelsey. Kelsey's the same way. They're always – you always see his hands up. You know, it's not down here catching around his knees. I mean, he probably can, but you don't want a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy reaching down to the ground. Yeah, 100%. I think that's an interesting competition, though. Let's see who – you know, I'd like to see the development of Theo and see what where he ends up. You know, the the, the Euro guy, is he going to come in and finally produce? You know, what's going to happen with the sophomore plat? And then Because I think, to me, he's got the opportunity to become a – Oh man, I think he's got the opportunity to become, become a huge. Tell huge you what, weapon. right now, if huge. Weapon. Theo's on the field a lot. Our tight ends are failing. If Theo <laughs> is on the field, I'm just telling you that right now. No offense, Theo. It's just you're probably right. You're probably right. Uh, don't I, look. Don't don't sleep on Watson, the the transfer from Washington. Uh, I think he's got an opportunity to get in there, and then you know Miller. I think <laughs> is probably more of a blocker type guy. Um, but you know he's there, so I have no clue about those two guys. I can't wait to go watch them play. Let's talk defense. Let's talk a little bit of defense. Look, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you call it. What position battle are you most looking forward to watching on defense? On defense, yeah. Position battle, man. There's so many good position battles in the secondary. I mean, just. Everywhere in the secondary, who do you who's your starting cornerbacks? No idea. I don't think everyone is he gonna be your starter. Two clear cut starters at safety. I think that's true. Who Matthews and um Anderson? Okay, so you got them too. Then you got, I mean, I think you put Chappelle in there. I think you got Ricks and that kid Lee, right? So you're going, you're going, you, you think it's cornerback. I think you got three of them. You start and you put two safeties. You got two uh, two two linebackers and four down linemen. Right? Is that is that is that eleven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four two five. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Three three of these corners. So you said Chappelle. You said Riggs. You said Lee. Yeah. How about Thomas, who was a freshman last year, and got on the field? Right. They'll get on the field this year. They're, they're going to supplement it out. We're going to run a lot of dime packs. How about Saunders. How about Saunders? I mean, I, all I'm saying is I think that is the most interesting position battle. I do think it's the cornerback position. I think that with the three that you named, and I, you know, look, Ricks didn't, Ricks was a five star kid, but he didn't really play a lot last year, right? For Alabama. He's got, he had a five star kid transfer from North Carolina, didn't play a lick. Yeah. <laughs> didn't play yeah. a lick. He, yeah, but he, he had another he was one five star kid. He was a five star kid that had already proven that he wasn't a five star kid in, Three years in North Carolina, so I'm not all that worried. We had a we had another kid, McCall, transfer in. He played one or two games, and right. I saw enough of that in the first in those two games to know that he's not the answer. If he's starting, then we got a lot of problems. So that's my point, right? So everybody's sort of penciling Ricks in there. He's a five star kid. He's got a ton of talent, but he hadn't he hadn't proven it yet, has he? We know, right. we know what we have in Chappelle. I think we know what we have in Chappelle. I. I'm, and I think we talked about this previously. I, to me, maybe he's the guy that moves inside the nickel, right? With his let physical- him loose, man. Let him eat. Let that yeah. kid eat. Let him in the backfield. He's quick, and he can hit. That kid can hit. Man, he was hitting as a freshman. He was hitting oh, as a freshman, Leho. Yeah. And and so I think we know what we have in Chappelle, and and I think Elko knows what he has in Chappelle. By the way, he absolutely he played for Elko yeah, as a freshman, right? Right. And, so, to me, it's the other, it's the other spots. It's Lee, it's Ricks, it's the transfer Saunders, it's Thomas, the guy that was a freshman last year that now is going to have a full off season and a second year in the in the system. How about Bussy? How about Bussy, the incoming freshman, right? Supreme athlete for sure, supreme athlete for sure, but no experience, right? And then there's other, other the other two transfer Hill and Mays. That that are still out there. You don't like McCall, but let's say he's in the mix. And um, 
there's Bobby Taylor, who nobody seems to ever mention. Uh, so, so there's bodies out there. And I'm not sure that some of the freshmen from last year, Thomas and spe specifically, maybe, maybe Bravion Rogers, don't, don't make, don't make a, a leap, a leap that gets you on the field. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of bodies. I don't know who all sticks around after the spring. I hope all of them do. And I hope you're right. Hopefully they're, man, they're moving them in and out of there. They're rotating them. They're keeping them fresh. And they're letting those guys play. And all of them are playing very well. The one thing I'd really like to see is one of them make a play on the ball at some point in, in the football season, right? Because that didn't happen ever last year. Well, I want to – it all depends on what kind of defense they're going to run. Are they going to run a bunch of zone, which I think will be a mistake? If you have the talent, man up and let your big dogs up front eat. You know what I'm saying? Get after that quarterback. Cover as best you can for, what, three, four seconds? Isn't that what it is? What's the time? Three, four seconds before the quarterback gets rid of it? I mean, yeah, I say get after that quarterback, make him make mistakes. Yeah, there's a lot of athletes at quarterback in the SEC, but I don't care. You get after them, they're going to make mistakes. There's more chances of them making mistakes running around than there is them sitting in the pocket picking well, your defensive arm. We saw that pressure last year, and there still weren't weren't much. There wasn't much as far as interceptions on the back end, right? And that's that to me is part of the problem. And last year, it didn't seem like our secondary was making plays on the ball at all, right? They were playing. It was all plays on the wide receivers, all plays on the wide receivers, no plays on the ball. And I'd like to see this group do better. I'd like to see them attack the ball in the air and go get some of those 50-50s. 50-50? That's the problem. Every 50-50 ball last year was like an 80-20 ball for the <laughs> offense. I mean, and that's I mean, why it's at times they went up and caught it. And that's, that's why, why it's such a big tournament. competition, right? This is the – this is look, we're going to have pressure up front. I don't think there's any doubt. You know, Nick coming in at defensive end, Shamar. You know, you've got you got uh, Stewart. You know, and so to me, Hicks is there, right? Silla and I White, all the guys you want to talk about, right? I think we'll be able to get pressure if they let those guys up front eat. The question is, can this secondary yeah. start making plays on the ball and actually get turnovers? I think Chappelle's gonna be back there in that second in that backfield quite a bit too if they let him loose. Amen to that. Man. Like Elko likes to stunt. Oh yeah. So that is an interesting competition. I'm interested to be at practice. I'm interested to go watch the game, uh, the maroon and white game. See see which one of these guys is on the field. Who's getting the reps? There's another one that comes to my mind too, though. And it's because we're losing the best player on this defense at linebacker. In Edge Cooper, who, by the way, Mel Kuyper's got a, now rated as the highest rated linebacker coming out. Number one. Okay. Number one. He's so got him, that in the draft. Is he top 10, top 20? Uh, he's got him in his top 25 as far as, as far as, after, you know, big board. He's better than that. But he's a guy that's going to end up first rounder in this draft, right? And his you wouldn't have thought that two years year ago. was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yep, wouldn't like have thought said, that two years ago. So who can take that spot? And I think that's going to be an interesting competition. I think we both think that York's going to be sort of that in-the-box guy that's going to be that downhill stopper. So who's the other guy? I have no clue on this team. On this roster right now, I have a bunch of guys that – Thought Harris would have been it by now. I haven't seen enough of that kid. He hadn't been on the field enough, right? Well, yeah. As a we freshman, seen what's years. interesting with Harris was as a freshman, they brought him in as a pass rusher at times. And then last year, we didn't see him at all pretty much on the field, right? That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, I like Martrell Harris. I think Martrell Harris has the athletic ability to be, a, to be not Edger and Cooper, but an Edger and Cooper ish. Type why play. didn't he get on the field last year? Why couldn't he get on the field? I know Coop was there, but why? I mean, he couldn't replace York and have him and Coop on the field at the same time. Do you remember who the coaching staff was last year? They were great. They were great. Um, yeah, I'm I, just saying. I don't understand why these 
players that we thought were so good and we watched them practice. And we're like, man, that guy's got talent. He, he's going to be on the field. Moose Muhammad's got talent. He's going to be – they proved us wrong. We don't know what the yeah. hell we're talking about. And look, if it's two staffs in a row, two years in a row, and Harris can't get on the field, I don't know. That's That'd be weird to me. But especially because of the fact that we saw him be a pass rusher two years ago as a freshman. I would like for Scooby Williams to get on the field just because I like his name. Hey. I'd like to be saying, Scooby! Hey, and Scooby's coming from Florida where he was with the defensive coordinator, Bateman. And so, you know, there, there's probably there's some familiarity there. And also, probably the good chance that he gets on the field at some point. Scooby, you, and you I can, can see a lot of Scooby snacks slash sacks. <laughs> Scooby sacks. I like that. I'll make the T-shirt. Scooby uh, sacks. And there's a couple of young guys in Sanford and Chance Johnson that have that, you know, were pretty well highly regarded coming out of high school. They haven't really got a lot of time yet. But those guys now are going to be in their second year, right? They're going to be in their second year. So <clears throat> can they can they break that rotation? Um, and then there's a transfer to Alex Howard. Um, not sure if. Not sure if he's any better, if he's better than any of these guys. I personally, you know me, man. I love, I love getting these young guys and the recruits and getting them in there and letting them play. I think some of somebody in that group is gonna is gonna show out a little bit. Uh, I'm rooting for Martrell Harris, by the way. I am. I am too. I'd like to see him get on the field. And you're right. I mean, the fact of the matter is that Florian York was the stud linebacker with last year's coaching staff. Yeah. He's got to keep that job, right? <laughs> Dude, we have so many guys in the secondary and we beefed up. They're so much bigger than last year. They, I could almost see them moving one of those guys into a linebacker or a hybrid type position. You know, like you talked about with Chappelle, maybe moving inside a little oh, yeah. bit and doing the slot, but I don't know. I'm just thinking that outside the box. I mean, we yeah, talked no about question, doing it last you know, year. They should have probably done it last year. And there's no question. I think, you know, especially some, you know, some uh, long passing down type situations where you just bring in a ton of athletes, you know, get yeah. like four safeties in there, like five corners in there and just bring pressure. <laughs> Put a bunch of Corey Castles on the field. I got you. I hear you. <laughs> you athletes. Um, I'll be honest with you. Aside from that, I think we've got a pretty good – I think we know who the starters on the defensive line probably are. I think Shamar Turner and and uh, Hicks are the, are starting inside. I think Nick and and Shamar Stewart are on the outside as far as your starters. But there is going to be some questions as far as the second group, and you know all those guys are rotators. I to me, it's probably more interesting. I do want to see how much we see of Samu, for example, and big guy Brunlo Dindy. Uh, the big guys inside. But in reality, I want to see what they do in passing downs with guys like Inai White, Malik Silla, you know, some of some of the young guys that um So what are you doing on what are you doing on third down? Are you are who are you taking off the field? If you're putting those two guys in, Anai White and Silla, who are you taking off? Well, you know, I, I, mean, may, I may move I may move a guy like Nick inside and let him rush with Shamar Turner inside put or Hicks on the bench. Yeah. Put, put Hicks on the bench, put, okay. you know, put uh Stewart on the bench and, and bring speed off the edge. I may put Harris out there. I, I like Harris as a pass rusher or we'll use him, you know, and there's yeah. guys that we haven't really seen much of yet. And Kennedy and, um, uh, not and you know the Solomon Williams, the freshman that he talked that that our guy talked about earlier. Um, so I keep going bodies. back to I keep going back to Chappelle. The kid's got instincts, and I like him. People don't like him as a pass rusher so much, but the kid's got instincts. He can get after the quarterback off the edge. We saw him do it. Oh yeah, and he's a good tackler. Him and Anderson both do a pretty good job of that. I expect exactly. Anderson to play a lot more deep this year, but. And I watched the Kansas City Chiefs defense, and I I thought they had a bunch of nobodies on that defense. They had a couple good players. They had a great cornerback, one or two, and then they had a great – Chris Jones. Tackle. Yeah, Chris Jones. Huh? Chris Jones. Yeah. Other than that, but the way they did their defense, you never knew who was coming. They always talked about 
because everybody's kind of standing up at the line because you don't know what they're doing. And all of a sudden, they snap, and this side of the line's all blitz, and everybody else, I mean, you just don't know. I think dumbass Smirkin Durkin tried to do that, but he didn't do it the right way because he everybody just said, screw it, we're just going to run the ball. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I am interested to see some of those. Look, we've talked about it before. There's times when Elko can get a little too creative, right? Especially right. on early downs, sometimes he can get a little too creative. But when it's when it is passing downs, that dude can come up with some schemes that are pretty darn good. And and I think that's where you may see, like you said, a Chappelle coming off the edge. Off this in the secondary, or you know, some uh, uh, some combination of the linebackers and all those types of situations, right? Breaking news: Aggies fire Buzz Williams at halftime of the Arkansas game. Aggies are losing 35-31 yeah, at well, half. That's not a surprise. Uh, all right, any anything else uh, you want to add here in the competition defensively? No, uh, I mean, defensive line, I think it's, like you said, it's pretty set. There's four. There's other guys that, I mean, it's more of a wait and see thing. I, there's a lot, so many guys that we picked up from transfers and whatnot. I don't have a clue who these guys are. Even the guy from Purdue, the, the, I've just heard stories. I haven't watched him play. I yeah. didn't watch much Purdue football last year. <laughs> no, 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 me neither. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about him. I'm excited. He's a Brian guy, too, by the way. So I'm excited. About yeah, that's what I heard. Um, let's move on here. Questions from the tailgate brought to you by Providence Financial Coaching. Call Steve Gay, certified financial counselor at 863-732-6224. Integrity, accountability, resourcefulness, and financial coaching. Over 20 years of experience, Aggie owned and operated. Give him a call. Uh, first question, most important thing you want to see in spring ball? Offensively and defensively. Start offensively. Let's start with offense. What's the one thing you want to see? Well, I want to see who's snapping the ball first at center. I want to see who the center is. We're pretty confident who everybody else in position is going to be. But the offensive line, I'm curious. And I'm, I'm curious if they're going to show us anything in the spring game, spring ball about their play calling style. What they're going to – what are they doing? Are they going from the shotgun? Are they going underneath? Are they using two tight ends, one tight end, three receivers, two running backs? What, what, what's their alignment like? What are they? What are we? What's are they going to give us any sense of what the season is going to be like with that? Or is it just going to be? I'm not know, worried about any of those things. I'm not worried about. Well, I am worried about the who's snapping the ball, but I'm not worried about the play calling or the formation. I am. I want to see. I want to see if it's changing. I mean, if it's the same thing we've watched for years, I'm going to get sick of it right away. No, no, no. I'll no, tell you I, that I, right I, now. Well, the reason I'm not worried about that is that it's going to be the Colin Klein offense, right? It's going to be a lot of gun, well, a, lot he of adapt? Motion, a lot of motion. That's what we're asking. Is he adapting? Is he making changes? Or is it going to be – does he but, think he's in Kansas still? I would say for me the most important thing I want to see about this from this offense is better coached offensive linemen, period. Are well, the we already said it can't get any worse. It can't get any worse. Are the offensive linemen well coached? Are they moving? Well, their you'll be able to tell that better than anybody else. Are they keeping their are their eyes up and and heads on a swivel? Can you can they see things coming from from the different angles, right? And those types of things. <laughs> are they keeping their feet wide enough and being able to stay on blocks? If because I think that there's enough talent on this offense that if this offensive line is even decent, they're going to score a lot of points. I mean, just the names that we said, I mean, they've all got talent. They were all highly recruited kids, and they should be great. You know what I'm saying? Zoom, Duberry, even Foster. Uh, you throw in Basantis, Fathery. I mean, we're talking – these kids could go to the next level, quite a few of them. Yeah, that's what – that's what I – that's the th most important thing I want to see on offense. How about defense? What do you got on defense? Dude, just what we talked about, the secondary. I want to see who's out there in the secondary. I want to see if Chappelle's playing. I want to see if he's staying. I want to see who's our second – who's getting the nod at uh, – what's it called, linebacker? Maybe somebody that we're not even talking about shows up, and we're just like pulling out our roster sheet going, who is that guy? We do that every year. We sit there and go through, who is who's that number so-and-so, you know? 
I can't wait for that. I'm right with you. It's all about the, to me. I want to see. A, I want to see the secondary. I want to see improvement in the secondary. I want to see those guys attacking the ball. I want to see them be aggressive, and that's that's what I want to see. That to me is the most the most important part. That's the thing. I don't think we're going to see that during the spring game. The aggressiveness. The. I mean, they I don't even know if we'll see as much as the we'll see in the first game against Notre Dame. Things, but in the back end, you should still be able to see the coverage skills, the the ball skills, and things like that. Hopefully, that's what I want to see. I want to see more ball skills on that se- in that secondary. I want to see that bussy kid get out. See if they let him loose a little bit. <laughs> True that. See what can do. Uh, but he's not on campus for spring, buddy. So that sucks. Projection of uh, for what's your projections for offensive and defense player of the spring? You know, Jimbo always makes a big deal about this. You know, and those guys end up never showing up at all. Um, let's let's do this differently. Let's let's. A guy that's going to show out in the spring, but also will have a big season offensively. I mean, I've, I've been saying Owens is going to be our guy all year. I'm going to go with Owens. Yeah, I love I love that pick. I, I love that pick. I, I, I'm going to go Platt. How about that? Okay. Uh, how about defense? I like where you've been with Harris. I like that kid. I think he's going to be – the starting linebacker taking edges spot is a, got a big shoes to fill, but I don't know if he'll be able to show us anything in the spring practice because they're not going to let anybody hit anybody. But you know, yeah, I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to go Shamar Turner, and I think he's getting himself ready to be a a high draft pick. And I think his motor's got to be just through the roof right now because he understands that this is his last year, and he wants to put it on the field. And I think to do that, he understands that he needs the team around him. He's going to be pushing them. Um, he's going to be pushing them. I, I liked one thing that Elko said the other day. It's like, Hey, you know, people can judge everybody on, on recruiting and whatever, judge us on who we put into the league. Well, here it is. It's time for that, buddy. It's time for that. Look, Jimbo's guys have been notoriously horrible at pre-draft process at, at getting drafted late and all this good stuff. It's time for these guys to be physically as good as the guys that they're coming out with uh, around the country. I expect the first one to be Shamar Turner. That dude, I, I hope that he just absolutely blows up. I hope you're right. All right, we made it through another one, Corey. Yay. Yay. Go watch the eggs. A piece watch the Aggie basketball game. from the tailgate. What's the score? It's 35-31 at halftime. Woo! Peace out, Thanks. Thanks.